a small 0.3 kilogram block is loaded into this horizontal spring, compressing it by 0.06 meter and then released. The block slides to the left along a track that is frictionless except for this 0.25 meter long horizontal region between points A and B. The coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.2 in this region. Find the maximum height reached by the block on the left side of the track. And then part B, where does the block finally come to rest? This problem looks like one that we use conservation of energy for because it starts with a block pushed into a spring and then let go. This means that the system is given a certain amount of energy at the beginning and then it's left to use this energy to run its own course. So we can use the work energy theorem. The work done by non-conservative forces equals to the change in total mechanical energy. And right now, there is friction. So there is a non-conservative force friction doing work, so the change in total mechanical energy is not zero. In part A, we want to find the maximum height reached by the block. So this block has to go through this region with friction to get to the other side. And let's find the work done by friction in that trip. So this will be the work done by friction is friction times the displacement times cosine the angle between the two. And the friction is uh, mu k times the normal force because it's uh, sliding kinetic friction. So this is what we want to find. Mu k is uh, 0.2. Normal force, when the block is in this region, the block is 0.3 kilograms, the normal force would equal to mg. So normal force would be 3 newtons because normal force would balance with the mg. The displacement, to reach the maximum height on that side, the block goes through this region for 0.25 meters. So the displacement is 0.25. The angle between friction and displacement, the block slides to the left, friction is in the opposite direction, so it's 180 degrees. So friction does the negative work, this gives us 0.15. So friction does negative 0.15 joules of work. The negative means the friction is taking 0.15 joules of mechanical energy away and turns it into heat. So this should equal to the change in total mechanical energy. Now let's find the initial mechanical energy and the final mechanical energy. Initially, the block is pushed into the spring. The moment of the release, the block has no speed, so no kinetic energy. This is the down low position. So if I choose this point as the reference point ground, then this block has no mgy at the beginning but there is a spring that is compressed, so there is one half kx squared. And that's one half times 400 times 0.06 squared, and that gives us 0.72 joules. So this is the initial mechanical energy. Final, when the block is at a maximum height over here, since it's maximum height, that means it's a turning point. No speed. Kinetic energy is zero. Up high, so it's going to have mgy. In fact, we're looking for the y, the height. When the block is at the maximum height, the spring would be relaxed. So no more energy in the spring. So mgy, that's all. And this equals to m.3 times, uh, I'm going to use 10 for g, and we don't know why, we're looking for y. Now, how much is this? We can set negative 0.15 joules to equal to the e final minus the e initial and find out how much the final energy is. Or we can just use the idea of conservation of energy. The system starts with 0.72 joules of energy. 
friction takes away 0.15. So how much is left at the end? It's 0.72 minus 0.15. So we have 0.57 joules left. And uh, this equals to 0.57. We can find y to be 0.19 meters. So this is the answer for part A. In part B, we want to find where the block finally comes to rest. Let's see. What happens is that this block is going to go to this side, go to the maximum height, 0.19 meters, and then slides back down, goes through this region with friction again, losing some more energy. In fact, it's going to lose 0.15 joules of mechanical energy. Compresses the spring again, but this time it has less energy, so it's not going to compress the spring as much as 0.06 meters. It's going to compress the spring a little less than that. And then bounces back, goes through this region and loses another 0.15 joules and goes up, but it's not going to go up as high as 0.19 meters because the system now has less mechanical energy. And then eventually the block is going to lose all its energy and comes to rest. And when it loses energy, it's in this region. So it must come to rest somewhere between A and B in this region. So this is kind of like a, um, a toll road. Every time you go through this, you have to pay some energy to friction. So it's like you have 0.72 joules. And then every time you go through this, you have to pay this much to friction. So how many times can you go through this region? So for part B, we can do 0.72 divided by 0.15. With 0.72 joules, it can afford to go through that region 4.8 times. The block starts on the right side, so it goes through the 1, 2, 3, 4, and then the fifth time it doesn't go all the way through, it only can go 0.8 times the total distance. So it's going to end up somewhere there close to B. If we want that specific rotation, we can do this. The distance between point A and B is 0.25 meters. The fifth trip goes to the 0.8 the way through. So 0.25 times 0.8, that is 0.2 meters. That means it goes 0.2 meters to the left of A. So 0.2 meters from point A, right there. That's the final position for the block. For this kind of problem, just in case, if you don't get a small number over here, let's say if you get either 40.8 or like 39.8 instead of 4.8, you certainly don't want to spend your time to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to count to 40 or 39. All you have to do is, if it's an odd number, then we know at the end of the 39th trip, the block is at B on the left side. If it's an even number trip, the block is at the A on the right side. And then we can take care of the point 8. If it's a 39 and we end on the left side, the last trip, that fraction of the trip, point 8, Goes, would go from here to the right, 0.8 of the total distance from the left end. If it's an even number, that would be just like what we did. Start from the right end and then go 0.8 the distance.